How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today I'm going to talk about living without an iPhone 10 because apparently for some people, it's a lot harder to not buy it than to give in and just buy the darn thing. As you can imagine, I and a lot of people have the cash in hand in the bank account to buy this phone outright, but this does not really mean affording it to me. To me, you can only really afford it after you've become financially independent first and retired early first. That means you need to have enough cash in the bank account to sustain yourself, to not have to work in order to make a living. And if you have money on top of this and you can spend this on whatever you want, you can buy a flashy brand new car, you can buy an iPhone 10 if you want. The point here is that you need to put your money into these endeavors first because it's essentially buying you more time first. Now, of course, if you're buying your iPhone 10 on credit or if you have to go through the payment plan in order to afford this, this means that you really cannot afford it and you really should not even think about buying an iPhone 10. Stick with your earlier version ones like an iPhone 6, 6S, those are good enough already. Now, in order to live without the latest and greatest all the time, you really have to have a good sense of being humble. Now, if you're more humble, you don't have the urge to need to show off. Therefore, it helps your finances because you never need to keep up with the Joneses and then buy all these fancy gizmos that depreciates really quickly over time. When you help your finances this way, this in turn inflates your net worth, increases it really, really quickly so that you can um, aim to retire early, which means it's essentially buying yourself more time. When you think about how much an iPhone 10 costs, it's about $1,000, and if you keep on doing this year after year, you keep on upgrading, it's likely gonna cost you anywhere between one to three years of your life. If you just do not keep up with the latest cell phone all the time, and let's say your anticipated retirement age is about 65, well, instead of doing all this, you could have retired maybe around 62, 63 instead. Doesn't that sound nice? You have two, three years of just free time left for yourself instead of uh, pouring all this money into the latest and greatest, which really does not increase your happiness after all. It does not really you know, increase your self value. Now being humble needs a lot of practice because you're allowing others to be better than you. This is counterintuitive to um, the general sense of people where people always like to go, oh, you know, I'm doing this better. You know, people are just trying to one up each other. Well, if you just allow others to, you know, be better and have their iPhone and I have my iPhone 5 over here, I just go, okay, yeah, you have a really nice iPhone. This is great. I just, you know, I'm pretty happy with mine as it is. When you do this, you release yourself of having all this baggage to having to spend all this money to keep up with other people, which in turns allow you to become financially independent a lot quicker than if you don't do this. Now, some people in real life, as well as in the comment section, have commented that, hey, aren't you embarrassed carrying around something so old? Um, how can you even show your face to other people carrying something like this? Well, to me, I practiced it in such a way that I decoupled my self-worth away from the device that I'm holding. I draw my self-confidence from a lot of different aspects of life. I use this phone as a tool only. I do not let it stand for who I am. Now, let me just give you an example of where my confidence come from so that I can actually hold this ugly thing around and not be embarrassed about it. Number one, I own my own home and realizing this, I don't really need something like this to boost my confidence because I know I have somewhere to live. Number two, I have a whole bunch of skills, you know, a lot of different DIY skills that I show on this channel. I know I can be self-sufficient and do various things myself. And this gives me a good confidence that, hey, you know, if I need something done, I can use my own hands and do it myself. I also have two years worth of emergency funds. So if I ever lose a job, I don't have to stress out about it. And I can essentially um, not worry about being coming homeless or anything. I can still live just fine. I can self-sustain myself. I won't suddenly have um, no income at all. I mean, I have a good little nest egg that I can use to draw from and, you know, pay for bills and things like that. So I won't be like, oh no, I'm broke. You know, I need to sell, sell off my possessions and stuff just to live. And additionally, I do have this YouTube channel, which I really, really enjoy making videos and stuff and people coming to watch it and me helping them. Um, I get various letters, um, comments and stuff through email, through comments saying how much I helped them and just this alone. Um, I feel like I'm contributing to society. Um, I'm helping people out. And basically this makes all this effort that I put into these videos well worth it. 
Now, in order to hold on this thing for so long, which is an iPhone 5, it's a really old phone, but I still keep on using it, is a good sense of delayed gratification. I am pretty good at like wanting something, but I can easily, easily not buy something that I want. I just will just wait around until it's a really, really good time. Maybe there's a sale or something. Um, I would wait around, just kind of scope around until I know it's a good time to buy or that if I really need it, sure, I'll buy it. But iPhone 10 is not something I really, really need. If maybe today um, this phone breaks, I cannot buy you know the six, seven or eight or whatever, and I have to buy the 10, sure, I'll just go and buy it. Now, another aspect that can help you hold on to an older phone. Generally, I find that this is from peer pressure. People would be like, oh, what are you doing with this old thing? This is really hurtful. It definitely affects me a bit because when I'm holding on to a phone that's just one generation or two generation old and then maybe all your other friends, they all have iPhone 10s and it's a little bit daunting. And if you find yourself um, in a situation where they're making fun of you, sometimes it happens. I had people make fun of me holding on to this iPhone 5 and what I do is I just go, yeah, you know, this is great. Um, I have this iPhone 5, I like how old it is. I'm just gonna try to see how much longer I can hold on to it. And on top of that, by the way, you guys are spending $60 a month. And by the way, I spend $0 a month on this thing. And they're like, what? This is crazy. And I'm like, ha ha ha, yeah, see? Now you might wonder, how did I become such a person where I don't care about the phone that I'm holding on to? This is a gradual process because I used to hold on to uh, a bit nicer type of phones. The thing that really got me to hold on to even older and older phones is that I've noticed my electronics depreciating so much. And I've been using electronics for a really long time and I used to um, get pretty cutting edge stuff and all I see is all these things get old really fast and soon after, you know, no one wants them and they're just, you know, dead paperweights and then they're not worth anything. And when I look back how much I've wasted on these things, it's just really hurtful. It's like, no, I don't wanna do this anymore. So then I try to spend less and less on electronics these days and, if you notice how much you lose on your old electronics, all this dead graveyard electronics that's just sitting around, then you might start to think about, oh my gosh, yeah, maybe maybe I am spending too much. You just add it all up, it'll be like thousands of dollars, just, just completely evaporated in value. Well, what I do with all this money instead is I just stick it into a retirement account, I stick it into a savings account or brokerage account, and I save this instead and this is essentially building up my net worth and it allows me to retire earlier, which means I am saving more and more time so that I can use this time, it might be years or tens of years, decades even, where I can use this and live the life that I want to live rather than you know doing commuting every single day, doing your 40, uh, 40 hour work weeks where you're essentially doing stuff that um, you're essentially told to do rather than um, you sitting at home and going, oh yeah, you know, um, today I want to uh, work on such and such hobby, just kind of expand your mind and, and do the things that you want to do. This is the whole purpose of retiring early, which is to buy yourself more time so that you can do what you think that you should be doing. I hope you enjoy this way of thinking about not buying the iPhone 10 or maybe not even buying the iPhone 8 or iPhone 7 because those are all pretty expensive as well. If you're interested in supporting this channel, don't forget to check out my Audible link down in the video description below. I got Patreon over here and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.